Hello, this is Andrea Maury of Drea Renee Knits, and today I'm gonna to be demonstrating German short rows. So I really like the short row method, especially if you're newer to short rows, because I just think that it's really simple to execute as you're getting used to short rows. So it's a lot of people's favorite method. So I hope you enjoy. I have cast on 15 stitches. I'm gonna begin the demonstration by holding the working yarn in my right hand and knitting English style. I'll do about four rows or so, and then I'll switch to continental, holding the yarn in my left hand for anyone who wants to see it in that way. But I just want you to know that you can really watch the whole tutorial no matter which way you knit. It doesn't change anything and how it's executed. Sometimes it's just nice to see it in the way that you knit. All right, so I'm gonna begin by just knitting 11 stitches. I have 15 cast on. And we use short rows to build up a section of fabric within our project. So they're really useful for things like building up the back neck of a sweater so that the front neck hangs lower and is more comfortable. They are really beautiful to use for a drop hem if you prefer the back of your sweater to be longer. They can be used as design features in shawls. There's so many different reasons to use short rows. So here we go. I have knit 11 and now I'm simply gonna turn my work. Now, if I just worked right back across this row without doing anything, what would happen when I begin working back and forth across all of my stitches again, is I would have little holes or gaps where this fabric got longer, but this side did not. And you would see those imperfections in your knitting. So that's why there's different ways to work short rows to try and minimize those little gaps or holes. So holding my yarn in front, I am going to slip this first stitch purlwise over to my right hand needle. Now I'm going to take my working yarn and I'm just going to pull up and over the back of my needle. And you can see that now I have both strands of that lower stitch pulled over my needle. And this is called a double stitch or DS and that's what you want it to look like. I can now return my working yarn to the front and I'm going to purl to the last four stitches on the other side here. Okay, and I'm gonna turn again. And it's the same method on this side. I'm going to bring my yarn to the front, slip my stitch purlwise, and then give a tug and pull your working yarn over the top of your needle and back. And there's my double stitch. And now I'm gonna work back to the first double stitch that I already created. So here it is and I'm just going to do a knit two together. So just, which is just the two strands of my double stitch. I'm not joining in any other strands. I just add those, just knit those two as though they're one. All right, I'm gonna knit one more and then I'm gonna turn my work again. This is the last row I'll demonstrate English style and then I'll show continental as well. So again, my yarn's in front. I slip that first stitch purlwise pull the yarn up and over the back of the needle to create my double stitch, return the yarn to the front, and purl my way back to the previous double stitch. By the way, it's Saturday here, so you're gonna hear my kids hooping and hollering and having a good time. Um, hopefully it'll be minimal, but. All right, here is my other double stitch, and I just purl it together as one purl one and turn. So let's show those again, continental style. So I bring my working yarn to the front. I slip the stitch purlwise and then I pull the yarn over and back around the needle to create my double stitch. And now I'm going to 
knit my way to my previous double stitch. Here it is. You can tell by the double strands. You can tell because they look a little funky. <laughs> um, if you're ever not sure or you're nervous, you could always place a stitch marker next to your double stitch so you know when you hit your stitch marker that you're there, especially if you're in a pattern that has a lot of them going on. All right, and now I just knit both strands of that double stitch together. So in the pattern, you usually will just see it as like knit to the previous double stitch, knit two together, and then it would say something like knit one, and then we'll turn. The most important thing here is to learn how to make the double stitch. So I'm on the back of my work, I'm holding my yarn to the front, I'm going to slip the stitch purlwise, pull the yarn over the top of my needle and back, return it to the front, there's my double stitch, and now I can purl to my previous double stitch, which is the other important thing to learn, is that when we get to a double stitch, we then just either knit or purl it together. So there's my double stitch, purl it together as one, now I'm gonna purl one and turn. I'm gonna bring my working yarn to the front, slip my stitch purlwise, lift that working yarn up and over the top to create my double stitch, knit to my previous double stitch, Here it is. I'm gonna knit two together, knit one, and turn. Bring my yarn to the front, slip the stitch purlwise, and pull the yarn over the top of my needle. Purl to the end, or I'm sorry, not to the end, but to my previous double stitch. I'm to the double stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and purl it together as one. Purl one and turn. So you can see here, let's go ahead and work across these final rows so that you can see how I've increased just the middle. I've created like a nice round shape here using those short rows. So I'm gonna bring my arm back to the front slip my stitch and then pull the yarn over the top of my needle to create a double stitch, knit to the previous double stitch, there we go, knit two together, and then I'll just knit my last stitch, and now I just purl back the other way, there's no double stitch to be created this time because I'm at the edge of my row. So you don't need to do that once you get to the edge. So again, I like this method because I generally use a lot of just wrap and turn, but you have to fix the wrapped stitch a very specific way depending if you're on the right side or the wrong side, if you're knitting or purling. Here I am to my last double stitch, I'm purling it together. So I like that this method really simplifies everything. You just are either knitting it together or purling it together. And as you can see, there are no holes to be found in here. So like this looks kind of like a little toe to a sock or a heel. And it's this nice little half circle shape from using those short rows. So again, short rows, you can do a deep dive into. There's so many great ways to apply them to your knitting. Um, but I hope you try out this method. It's pretty fun. And I think it's a great one to have in your arsenal. So happy knitting and I'll see you next time.